On this episode of Fudpucker Farms, I return from my extended absence to find some troubles in my gardens. And I'm also going to show you how to keep your immune system running in tippy-top shape by teaching you how I make kombucha and kimchi. Are you ready? Let's go. Okay, let's start with this garden update. Um, this plant right here is one of the small, the, one of the plants that I planted, one of the seeds that I planted oh, a few videos ago. Uh, this is the uh, Exotic Genetics Big Smooth, which is the Blueberries Cookies Cross, which I'm excited to grow. Um, I'm, I'm having some, a little bit of trouble, which I was expecting to have because of the climate differential uh, here. And the amount of rain that we've been getting has just been very detrimental this year. Uh, in my statistical measuring area, we have already exceeded our average annual rainfall for this area by 8 inches. And it's not August 1st yet, and we haven't had a hurricane yet. So, um, needless to say, there's been an exorbitant amount of water uh, that my plants have been getting this year and, and it's been a problem but anyways of the six plants that I uh, planted uh, that you've seen along the way here two of them turned out to be females which of course I had two 30 gallon pots ready to go these got transplanted on July the 20th into those 30 gallon pots and she's looking pretty healthy right now um, no complaints so far and then this over here is the one female of nine pound hammer that I got and she's got a small magnesium problem that I'm noticing as you can see here some necrosis uh, on this particular leaf and we got we have some uh, purpling stems so that is uh, of course a concern and I'm having a, some nutritional problems this year because of the drastic amount of rain that we'd be getting so much more than what we normally get. But we'll see how this goes and continue to, to keep working at it. In between my uh, trips back home, or I should say trips back north, to take, uh, take my turn in the rotation of helping my parents out. Okay, so here's what I've done to conclude this garden update. The second wave of plants, which is this one pictured here, the Exotic Genetics Big Smooth, and this one here, the Jinx 9-pound Hammer, have both received some LST, as you can see in the pictures, and a healthy dose of magnesium along with my compost tea. Now, I'm sure that they're going to respond very well to that. Um, they seem very ha like ha very happy plants right now, and I'm, I'm you know, I'm eager to see how they're going to do here. The haze plant now, which is pictured here, uh, has been stretched out into a cage and thinned out along with the major top dressing that I gave her of fishbone meal, rock dusts, which included green sand, basalt, olivine, azomite, rock phosphate, gypsum, and langbanite, along with a six-gallon feeding of my compost tea recipe, which I've outlined that uh, a few videos ago. Now this picture was taken a couple days after she you know, got that and she's responded fairly well here initially. I probably need to get back inside the cage there and thin her out even some more, which I think is going to help her here in the long run as we got uh, about 10 weeks to go till harvest. Um, and here, just, you know, I'm happy to hear any comments that you guys might have for me in the comment section below because I've never gone through this and I'm going to be gone again here in two weeks. So the plants are going to need to fend for themselves a little bit and I need to set them up to do that in my absence somewhat. Okay, lastly, here's a picture of, picture of the Lost River Watermelon Skittles. She is a beautiful plant. She doesn't really like stress training very much. She's a bit brittle, and because of that, and I'm not used to these plants being as brittle as she is, uh, I lost a very nice branch off of this plant um, that was full of flower sites. It was very pretty, and it made me almost cry. Um, but... That might be for the better this year in the long run because of my foreseeable absence coming up. 
Uh, she also received the same top dressing that the Hayes plant did and a six gallon feeding of the tea. And she has done exceedingly well with all this rain that we've had. I'm really loving this plant so far. Plus, this part of my property now is starting to get a faint smell of watermelons, which is really kind of neat. Okay, let's move on with this video. Let's get back into the casa and let's make some kombucha and some kimchi. All right, kombucha. Man, it's great stuff in my opinion. And it's so easy to make. You start out, you got to start out by obtaining a SCOBY, which is that thing you see in the glass jar there. Um, SCOBY is actually an acronym for Symbiotic Culture of Bacteria and Yeast. Now, you should be able to find one at any health food store. If you call around, you'll find it. Or if you know somebody that already makes kombucha, they'll have plenty of extras. And I guarantee you that if you ask them for it, they'll probably give it to you. So as I said, this is so freaking simple to make. You start out by simply making tea, good old-fashioned boiling water and tea tea bags. Now I make a total of nine gallons of kombucha. Uh, I started out a couple years ago making just one gallon and now my wife and I drink this nearly every day. So nine gallons lasts us about a month. I produce that nine gallons in two gallon batches as you see here I'm making tea in just a two gallon pot. And I cool that, I take it off the burner and I cool it overnight. I let it steep overnight. I use 12 tea bags per two gallons. Um, and it cools down to room temperature. After that, I put sugar into uh, the tea, one cup per gallon, so two cups of sugar in two gallons, just plain white sugar. Now, you don't have to worry about, you know, this tea being sweet because the bacteria is going to eat that sugar. That's what ferments the tea. Um, and you make sure that all of it is dissolved. And then I have two different vessels, as you can see. Here's my five-gallon uh, food grade five gallon bucket that I put uh, that I have a scoby already in and I fill that this is the second batch that I'm filling and I also uh, have some some two gallon uh, glass jars that you'll see later in the video um, <clears throat> Once that you get this fermentation process going, you put the tea towel on, as you see here, and then you let it sit uh, and ferment for about three weeks to a month. Um, so let's fast forward three weeks here. Now comes some of the work that you have to do. It's some of the tedious work that you have to do, and that is cleaning these bottles. Um, you bring them, I mean, it's, they're practically sterilized. This water is so hot, which is why I'm wearing the gloves that you see here. Um, but you sterilize these bottles and you make sure that they're clean because after you, you, you use them, you, you are reusing these bottles. As you can see, you look inside this bottle here, I do, and every single bottle to make sure the bottom is clean, which is what you're seeing right now. All right. Once you got your bottles all cleaned and set up and ready to get filled, uh, now comes the kind of the creative part. There's a couple of steps to do here before we get into kind of filling the stuff with flavorings and whatnot. But the first thing you got to do is uh, you're gonna you're gonna bring your fermented tea, which is what you see here in the in one of my glass vessels. You remove your scoby and you place that in a. I place I have use a bunch of stainless steel bowls. I place that in a stainless steel bowl. You take some of the existing um, kombucha out to hydrate that scoby and you set it aside. Um, after that you pour out all of the remaining or as much as the remaining kombucha, the fermented kombucha that that you have into your stainless steel bowl which you're gonna see some of the mother in there you can see that there. Um, once you have that bowl filled then you take your glass jar you put the scoby that was just in there back in there um, and set that aside because you're going to fill that in a few days with some more fresh kombucha or unfermented tea with sugar in it. Um, and then you strain out your, your kombucha to get out any pieces of the mother that might still be there. Uh, and then comes the creative part. You can put in whatever kind of flavorings that you like into, these, uh, into your bottles. Um, and I say, just whatever your heart desires. Now, I personally, I've tried a lots of different combinations over the last couple of years, and I've kind of honed it down into a combination of pineapple juice. I always use pineapple juice, candied gingers, and then a variety of berries. 
in the video that I that I made here or the batch that I made in this video I used some blueberries I used some blackberries and I used some strawberries along with that pineapple juice and candy gingers um, each single bottle receives two tablespoons of the pineapple juice and one piece of the candied ginger and then any combination of the berries you can put all three berries in if you want uh, you can put strawberries and blueberries uh, just blackberries strawberries and blackberries um, you know cause it's pretty much whatever you want after you get everything into the, the bottles then you fill your bottles up with uh, your fermented tea out of that stainless steel bowl that I have here as you can see that I'm doing here and then you cap all these darn things you cap each one you kind of give it a good tight squeeze because it's gonna ferment again you're gonna when you get them all done all capped then you're gonna take all these bottles and you're gonna put them back into a refrigerator for another three to four weeks for its second fermentation but that's what makes it you know bubbly um, that's where the fizziness comes from fizzy bubbly <laughs> okay so that pretty much brings us to the end of the kombucha portion of this video um, get creative go out and make this I'm gonna tell you why you should drink this along with why you should eat kimchi at the end of this video but let's move on now to making some kimchi okay let's get on with this kimchi recipe now this kimchi recipe is a winner really literally this is the recipe that of the kimchi that was voted best kimchi in New York City by the New York Times the chef uh, that that made this recipe claimed that it was her grandmother's recipe and she made a video about it and it's posted online um, many years ago uh, and I'm gonna and she's an open source believer and uh, she's you know willing to share this recipe with the world and it's a fantastic recipe so let's get to the process and trust me this is a process it takes some time with you start this process with Nava cabbage as you can see and you quarter that and you cut the corners of the quarters off <laughs> of each piece and then you take pickling uh, salt or rock salt and you're gonna want to rub this cabbage down in between each layer each leaf you put you're gonna put some salt in there okay and then when you're done with all four quarters salting it you're gonna put it in a bowl and you're gonna cover that bowl with a towel and you're gonna leave it for five hours after five hours you're gonna come back to it and you're going to swish it around and you're going to rotate it by simply flipping the cabbage which is going to be a bit softer now and you flip that cabbage over in the bowl and you put the towel back over it for another five hours now one thing you're going to do in between those two five hours after the first five hours you're going to make a rice paste which is what you're seeing here it's really simple you take white rice flour or sweet rice flour you take two tablespoons of that you put it into two cups of water you whisk it in you bring it to a boil until it thickens then you take it off the heat and you set it aside to cool down to room temperature during the course of that second five hours okay now there is an option that you have in this recipe and that is for salt cod if you are going to add the salt cod in here then you're going to want to take that salt cod during that that in between time of the second five hours you're going to want to get that cod into water to you know get that saltiness out of the cod you're going to um, hydrate the cod and shred it I did not use salt cod in this recipe um, not that it's bad it just this the recipe to me I've had it with the, the cod it just seems a little too salty and a little bit too fishy for me then um, okay now the fun begins we get to make our kimchi paste first thing you got to do is get out all the ingredients that kind of go in here so you daikon radish and uh, green pepper and garlic and uh, ginger and all that stuff and you're gonna mince and chop and get all that ready and you're gonna put that all into a big big bowl on top of that then you're gonna wanna add in some salted shrimp now this is an ingredient that I've had it with and without and it's a thousand times better with it's a, it's a key ingredient if you don't like a heavy shrimp flavor you can rinse that shrimp um, before you add it in here but definitely you want to get brined or salted shrimp and you'll find that in an Asian store 
Uh, then you add in all your sauces. You should have a couple of different kinds of fish sauces. You're going to want to get, uh, put your shrimp in. You're going to want to put your pl a plum sauce in, uh, apple sauce. And then that rice paste that you made earlier, you add all of that in. Then on top of that, you're going to want to add your red pepper. Now, if you want to get authentic, you're going to use Korean red chili pepper flakes, which is called gochuguru. Um, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Somebody's probably laughing out there. But I, you know, the, it's like fifty dollars a bag if you go to the to an, a Korean a Korean store that has it. It's it's expensive. Um, I buy the inexpensive same pepper that's grown in China or wherever, and it's only five dollars a bag. So. Now, you have an option here, too. If you like your food, there's a range for the pepper. You can put in as little as a quarter cup, which is nothing, basically, or as much as two cups. Now, if you like really, really hot food, you like spicy food, put in two cups. And let me tell you, I've done that in the past, and I like hot food, and that was that was too hot for me. Um, if you like really mild food, but the, the flavor is really important with kimchi, and this brings a lot of really good flavor, um, you can put in a quarter or a half a cup. Uh, the recipe calls for a half to a two cups. I put in one cup, and that's what you see me doing here as I put in one cup of that pepper. Next, um, you want to get your cabbage out before you mix your paste. Get your cabbage out, you rinse it, and you damp it dry with paper towels. Then you mix that paste all together into a slurry uh, paste. Then you smear that paste all over that cabbage, in between every single leaf, every layer on, in that cabbage. And you replace it back in, into the bowl that you had the cabbage in. And you, uh, you want to use all the paste, every bit of this paste. You pack it all in there. And once it's all gloppy and in, in, in there, then you, use, you can take the, the, the pieces of cabbage, the quarters of cabbage, and you kind of roll them up. You can cut them if you want. You can cut them in half, and so you get you'll end up with eight big pieces. That's fine. Um, and then you're going to place that into a mason jar or into a crock. Now I obviously use a crock, as you can see. I mean a mason jar, as you can see here, and I use a cap with a vapor lock on it because this is going to ferment for a while. So you pack that down in there, and you're going to want to leave this out on your counter. And I put a plate underneath my mason jar because it's going to ferment. Uh, you're going to put a towel around it to keep the light out, uh, and it's going it, to. I've had batches that don't bubble over; they just gas out, and then I've had batches that bubble over and and produce tons of gas and 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 come out through the top of that uh, vent lock. Um, after about t five to ten days, somewhere in there, uh, you can take the towel off of it and you're going to move it into your refrigerator for at least another 10 days. The longer you leave it in your refrigerator, the better the flavor develops, uh, and it does slow the fermentation down quite a bit. But basically, one of these these mason jars takes me about 90 days to eat. And when I get to the bottom of it, it is the best tasting. I should really just make two batches and let one go for 90 days and see how that tastes. But I'm not going to do that. So why do I go to all this trouble? I'm making my own kombucha, my own kimchi. Well, I'll tell you why. Because both kombucha and kimchi have been proven across a multitude of university studies to build and maintain an optimal immune system. Most of your immune system, like 90% of it, is in your gut. Now, if you thought, uh, if you've been through what I have been through with Hell's Bells, man, you don't ever want to see the inside of a hospital again, trust me. Plus, since I started doing this, and I've been doing this about four years now as part of my diet, I have not been sick, not with even a sniffle, since I started building my immune system back to its peak performance. And it has served me very well. On top of that, it helped me to continue to, you know, when I had my heart attack, I was uh, considerably overweight, obviously. And this was part of the process to help me lose a lot of the weight. It helped me burn fat. Not saying that it does. It, I'm not a doctor, but uh, it helped me quite a bit. All right, gang. We're, let's, we're going to wrap up this video here. I have one shout-out to close today, and that's to Doc Brown. 
and I believe that's Doc Brown's green thumb out there. Thanks. I really appreciate the complimentary comment uh, that you made on my channel while I was away. I will do my very best to get another garden update out in video form before I, I need to leave again. So uh, love, light, peace, everybody. We'll see you on our next video.